Hi, I'm Rick Fussell and welcome back to the Ingrain Workshop. In today's video, we're going to be taking a 117-year-old post office box door and we're going to restore it to its original condition. This door was manufactured back in 1906. We're not only going to restore the door to its original condition, but we're going to repurpose the door into a beautiful black walnut post office box door bank. So let's get started. Okay, so to build our post office box bank, we're going to need two things. We're going to need the lumber to build the actual bank body, and then we're going to need a post office box door. So what I've got here is I've got a post office box door. Now this is the original condition of the post office box door. This is how I acquired it. Uh, you can see all the old patina. Let me see if I can zoom in. Um, that's all the old patina. It's got the original uh, glass window that still has the original number in it. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to take and refurbish this and get it back to the original condition that it was. Now this particular uh, post office box door is a 1906 Flying Eagle. Um, so this door is you know well over 120 something years old. So that's the first thing we're gonna have to do. And then we've got a piece of black walnut. This is what we're going to use to build the bank body out of. It's approximately 30 inches long, 7 and an 8 inch thick. Um, we are going to have to plane it down to 3 quarters of an inch thick because that's the material that we're going to be working with uh, to build the bank. And um, this is what we're going to be using to cut the top, the bottom, and the sides of the banks out of, or the bank out of. Um, but the first thing we're going to have to do is address the door and we're going to have to clean the door. So let me show you the process that I go through to clean a post office box door. Okay, so the first thing I've done here is I've just sprayed on some lubricant on the screws. Um, again, you know, this door is over 100 years old and there is uh, a lot of rust on here. And that's just going to make it easier for us to get the screws out. The other thing is due to the age of this door, um, all the screws are just flathead screws and they're very tiny and small and they're made out of brass uh, So you don't want to strip them So you definitely want to spray some lubricant on there And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the two screws that hold the dust cover on and this is for the gears That work the combination on the front of the door So with the two screws out of the dust cover, I can now remove the dust cover. And you'll see that there's a washer right here, a very thin brass washer, and then there's a gear, and then there are a couple of more washers, and then another gear. So depending on how many gears they have, and they vary, this one has two gears, which means it's gonna be a two number combination. The majority of them have three gears and they're a three number combination like an old master lock or gym locker combination. Um, so that's the reason why we had these two spacers in here. I think that just takes up the space of the third gear. So for whatever reason they were short of gears and they just used the spacers. The next thing we're going to have to take off is the, uh, the window. Uh, glass uh, because the number we're gonna have to replace the number clean the glass so there's two screws that hold these window brackets in place and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove those so the next thing we're gonna do is remove the door latch and there's a screw right in the middle of the latch Once you loosen the screw, there's a spring on here. So let's take the spring off and I'm gonna put the screw back in the latch so I don't lose it. And that's it. We've pretty much taken about as much as we can apart from this door. 
So now we need to clean this door. So that's the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make up our cleaning solution to clean the door. So now we've placed our door in this tray and we're gonna mix up our special top secret uh, cleaning solution. And it's a 50-50 mixture. So the first ingredient is just um, household ammonia. And the second ingredient is our special secret ingredient. So now we have enough of our secret cleaning solution. Um, so it's just covering the face of the door. And we're gonna let that cook for about 24 hours. And then we'll come back and clean it up with a, a wire brush. And then we'll also hit it on our wire wheel. Um, and that will totally bring it back to its, uh, restore it back to its original uh, condition when it was originally um, made back in 1906. So that's all our cleaning solution was, just a uh, household ammonia and our secret, secret ingredient. I'm sure you can probably guess what the secret ingredient is. If you think you know, then uh, leave them in the comments below. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned the internal parts of the door um, just using Windex and a, uh, a razor blade. I, uh, I cleaned up the glass. Um, the rest of the uh, parts, I just uh, hit them on a wire wheel um, and just, you know, again, just trying to bring them back to their original condition. Um, and you can see all the brass parts, you know, they really look nice. And then I knocked all the rust off the uh, window clips here. Um, and then I actually uh, I hit the screws on there as well. So um, all the parts have been cleaned. Um, again, the door is going to be cooking in our cleaning solution for about 24 hours. So now we're going to turn our attention to the actual wood um, and the bank, it, bank body itself. So I'm going to start with the uh, bank body. I've got a piece of black walnut that's roughly 6 inches wide by 36 inches long. I'm going to start here at the planer and what you'll see here is a planer sled and I've got this set up so that I can um, flatten one face of my uh, black walnut um, making sure that it's horizontal with the plywood sled that it's on that way I do have one face that's plane down and is level there's no um, bows um, cups or anything like that or twist in the uh, in the black walnut and once I get that face plane down, then I can take it out of the sled and then just plane the opposite side. And then I'm trying to just plane it down to a little greater than, maybe a 32nd greater than the 3 quarters of an inch. So you can see here with the one face plane down, I've taken it out of the, the planer sled, flipped it over, and now I'm planing the opposite face. And once I get that plane down um, to a little bit greater than three quarters of an inch, then we can take them over to the table saw and uh, join the edges of the board. Next, I'm going to place my stock in my joiner sled. I don't own a joiner, so this is how I join wood. It's basically just a plywood uh, sled that has a factory edge on one side of the plywood, and that's the edge that's running up against the table saw fence and then that cuts a straight 90 degree edge on my rough stock, which is sitting uh, in the sled itself. So that's gonna give me one 90 degree edge. Then I'll turn the piece around and put that fresh cut 90 degree edge up against my table saw fence and then rip the other edge. So now this way, all my edges and faces are now parallel to each other and are 90 degrees. So that's how you can mill up uh, some lumber if you don't have a joiner. You don't need a joiner. Uh, sure, it's convenient. It's nice to have a joiner. Um, but if you don't have a joiner, don't think that that's the end of the world. You can always join a board even without a joiner. Um, so like I showed with these two jigs, both the plan planer jig and the uh, table saw or the joiner jig, uh, you can joint and mill lumber uh, without a joiner. So I've got a piece of board here now that is exactly three quarters inch thick. And then both edges are 90 degrees to the surfaces of the wood. Um, and then it's uh, three quarters of an inch, I think by 
36 inches. And, uh, and this is typically the size lumber that I'm using for boxes that I'm making. Um, so this works out great for me. Okay, so now that our board was uh, planed down and properly joined, uh, I went and just looked at the board to see, you know, which, uh, which grain direction and would get, make the best top and bottom and then the sides in the back. So the tops and bottoms are the same uh, dimensions and then the sides in the back are the same dimensions. So then I went over to the uh, miter saw and just rough cut the piece in half. So this will be my top and bottom of the banks and then my two sides and backs will come out of this piece of the back. The next thing we're gonna do is trim the pieces down to their final sizes here at the table saw. Now with our tops and bottoms cut down to their final width, it's time to cut them down to the final length. The length of the uh, tops and bottom is going to be uh, 6 and 3 eighths. So I'm just going to cut this here at my table saw with my, uh, with my cross cut sled. I've got a stop set up for 6 and 3 eighths and that's what we're going to make the cut for the top and bottom. So now it's time to cut the, uh, the two sides and the back out of this piece. Again, this is already uh, to its finished width, which was uh, four inches. I am going to have to trim the back down to three and three eighths. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and cut the finished lengths for both the two sides and the back. And that's going to be uh, five and one thirty second inch. And I've already got my stop set up here at uh, my cross cut sled. I'm going to make those cuts next. Mm -hmm. So now we have the top and bottoms cut down to their finished width and lengths along with the two sides and the bottom. So now we're just going to orientate them to see which has the best grain pattern and grain size and then we're going to go over to our pocket hole jig and start drilling a couple of uh, pocket holes. Okay so the next thing we're going to do is start drilling uh, a pocket hole in uh, both sides of the bank and in the back. Now, on the left side, I've made the mark toward the front. That's where we're gonna make our pocket hole jig. And then on the left, uh, on the right side, I did the same thing. I put my mark toward the front and top. This is where our pocket holes are gonna go on the sides. And in the back, it's right in the center of the back, uh, on the top uh, of the back. So again, I just orientated the pieces so the, the best sides are gonna be out. So I'll put my pocket holes on the inside because those aren't going to be seen. Those are going to be inside the bank. So let's start drilling some pocket holes. So this is kind of how the bank's going to uh, be put together. You can see that we've got our pocket holes in the back, the two sides. And then what we'll do is, once we sand everything down, uh, we're gonna take and round over the edges here on the front. Uh, the bottom's gonna have a half inch round over along with the top around the entire perimeter. Um, I am gonna round over just the uh, outside corner of the sides. And then what we'll do is we'll fasten the top. Once we glue up the body, we'll take and fasten the top with pocket holes and then we'll screw from the bottom into the sides in the back and that's how we'll fasten uh, the bank. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, start some sanding. I don't want to bore you with the sanding so I might leave this out of the video. Now with our sides and back sanded down to 80 grit, um, we're going to go ahead and glue up the two sides in the backs. So I'll just clean up the excess glue with a damp rag and then we'll just leave them in the clamps overnight to cook. So whenever you're mass producing something or doing a, a, a lot of repetition, it's always good to try to figure out a way to make a template. And that's what I've done here. Um, 
these banks are specific for the doors. Now, the particular doors, uh, if they're the same type of door, they should be the same sizes, but if uh, between different manufacturers, the sizes will fluctuate. So this particular door that we're using on this project is a number one Flying Eagle. And as you can see, I've made the template the same size as the top and bottoms of the banks. And what I've done is I've put the screw locations on the template and actually pre-drilled the holes uh, in the template for the bottom. And then for the top, we're gonna need a coin slot for your coins to go through. And I've went ahead and centered and routed a slot. And we'll use this template for both cutting out or for drilling out the, the four screws that are on the bottom of the bank and also for cutting out the coin slot, which we'll do over at the router, router table for the tops of the banks. So right now, let me get the uh, template uh, installed here at the drill press. I'll get my fence set up along with my stops. That way I can just uh, move the piece from stop to stop to make the, the, the pre-drill the holes at this precise locations. Okay, so we're back here at the router table and I just wanted to show you the router table setup with the template that I made. And again, this is the same template that we just used to drill uh, the holes in the bottom of the banks over at the drill press. Now we're here to cut out the coin slot for the top of the bank. Um, so I've got here uh, an indication that says rear of bank, uh, front of bank. So we're gonna take and set the template over. I've got a quarter inch spiral upcut bit here. And then you um, adjust your fence. So now the, fit, uh, the template is right up against the back of the fence. And then you just slide it over and then you can adjust your stops. So I've got my left stop set up, my right stop set up, the fence is at the right location. So now all I have to do is take my top and orient it uh, whichever I want it to be the rear um, and this is going to be the finished top so any blowout or anything I want on the inside of the top so um, and this is going to be the front so I'm going to place the rear up against the fence just like the template and then I'm just going to slowly plunge the top down uh, and then uh, make sure it's all, all of the way up against the right stop and then I'll move it over to the uh, to the left stop and that'll complete the cut. Now I'm gonna lower the bit because I'm gonna do this in two passes. I'm not gonna try to get uh, everything out with one pass. So I'm gonna lower the router bit down um, to take out about half the material and then I'll raise it back up and take out the rest of the material. So now with a half inch round over bit here at the router table, I'm going to go ahead and route uh, the bank body, which consists of the front sides and the back sides. And again, I'm just putting a half inch round over uh, on the sides of the bank body. And then I'm going to come back and do the same thing on the tops and bottoms. But I'm only going to put a half inch round over on the front and the, the two sides. I'm not putting a round over on the back of the top and the back of the bottom. Those are going to be flush at 90 degrees. So now it's time to shift gears and uh, address the door. The door's been cooking for over 24 hours in our top secret uh, cleaning solution. So now I've pulled it out. I've rinsed it with just water and now I'm over here at the wire wheel um, and I'm just going to clean it up here at the wire wheel. And once we get all the patina removed from the brass and we've got it down to just solid brass, we'll take it over to my uh, assembly table and we'll start working on taping off the door and then antiquing the door and I'll go more into that process shortly. 
So now with the uh, door cleaned and shined up on the uh, brass wheel, um, it's time to antique the door. And what I'm going to do is, or what I've done so far, is I've taped off all the flat areas on the door. Now these are areas that I don't want to get uh, painted. Um, this area here, I don't want it to really get painted, but we do have to have the numbers and the uh, the lines painted black. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll antique it with just a flat black, let it set up for about five minutes, maybe ten minutes, and then come back and hit it, scuff it up with some steel wool. And what that will do is all the uh, depressions will uh, maintain the, the black paint. All the raised areas, I'll knock the black paint off. So these areas around the numbers um, will be the, the original brass that you see here. And then the, uh, the slots and the numbers themselves should be flat black. Same thing with the, uh, the eagle and then the, the sunburst or the sunbeams behind the eagles. Uh, the sunbeams on the, the uh, depression part uh, will, will uh, be black and then the raised parts will be brass. And it just brings it back to the original condition of when the doors were made and placed in the post office. And that's the look I'm really going for, is just the original look. And that's why I've taped off the levers and then the dial because uh, those won't get paint. Um, but everything else will get painted and then it'll get stuffed, uh, scuffed down with some steel wool. So that's what we're going to do next is just give it a light coat of flat black. So now with the door exactly how we like it, and again, this is just personal preference. Um, you can take off as much or as little of the black as you want, um, but again, I'm just trying to um, restore it back to its original, uh, its original condition. So the next thing that we're going to do now with the door antique is apply two coats of polyurethane, just clear polyurethane. And that will seal the door and protect the door. So that's going to, and that should be the last thing as far as finishing the door that we need to do. Now we'll also need to go back to our bench grinder and on our wheel, um, you'll probably can see that there's four clips on the back of the frame. Uh, here's one, two, and then there's two on this side. And these clips or how the postmaster would clip it into what they called the pigeonhole, uh, which is where you got your mail. And then there'd be a whole bank of these number ones. These are considered the small door. But in order for me to mount this in the bank that we're building, I'm just going to have to grind off these ears. So um, once the finish set, uh, sets, um, I'll take it over to the grinder and just grind off these uh, four brass ears just to make them flush with the frame. That way I'm able to drill, I'm going to have to drill some holes in the frame in order to mount it to our bank. Okay, so now we have all the pieces of our bank body sanded down to the final grit uh, with the orbital sander. I also used the horizontal and vertical belt sanders uh, at 80 and 120 grit. And then I went from 120 down to 320 grit uh, with the uh, random orbital sander. So the top, the bottom, and the body, they're, they're all sanded down to the final uh, grits. So now it's time to assemble it. Um, but I did run into a problem is that on the top, when you look at the top, you can see this is the back of the top and then I've rounded over the front and both sides. And as you can see, the coin slot is not lined up to the center of the door. And what happened was when I routed the slot, two things I think happened. I think when I, when I went to route the round over, I changed up the front and the back uh, because of the orientation of the wood or some of the grain. I just thought that, that uh, when I routed the front 
there was some uh, grain color that I wanted to get rid of. Uh, so I ended up swapping the front and the back when I did the round over. But it, at that time, I'd already cut the coin slot in based on the reverse orientation. So now, as you can see with the back, up, with the template up against the back, uh, my coin slot is no longer in the groove. It's further down because when I routed it, I routed it in this orientation. So, um, like with any woodworking project, um, I, you know, there's always a mistake here and there, and it's just a matter of figuring out how to resolve it. This is our uh, coin slot. Uh, it's a brass coin slot, and it's oversized for the slot. So, as you can see, I do have some wiggle room here where I can move the slot up. Um, to where I need to cut the new slot and still the coin slot will cover up the existing slot or the first slot that we cut. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back over to the router table and route another slot above this slot um, and then install the coin slot which will cover up both slots. Okay so with the other slot cut in the top it's time to go ahead and assemble the bank body and I just uh, shot some pocket holes into the uh, top and now I'm just shooting some inch and a half drywall screws uh, into the bottom and again I'm just centering uh, the top uh, and the bottom with the bank bodies um, and then I'll take and once I get uh, the bank body itself assembled then we'll go ahead and start the finishing process and I'll go ahead and just spray three coats of high gloss lacquer on the bank itself and then it'd be time to install the door. So for the door installation I went ahead and installed all the interior hardware in the reverse order that we took it out. Now I'm pre-drilling because this walnut is a hardwood um, and then I'm gonna just hand screw some tiny screws, uh, four screws all together, two on each side of the frame um, that will secure the frame to the actual bank body. Now that the door is installed, we're going to focus our attention here at the coin slot. And you can see that the coin slot is large enough to cover both uh, the first and the second slot, uh, which was great. Uh, it was able to uh, fix our problem. Um, so now I'm just going to center the coin slot with the top of the bank, and then I'm going to pre drill um, some holes. And here we're just going to use some brass. Um, 5 8 inch studs and uh, once I pre-drill I'm just going to nail the studs uh, into the coin slot and that will hold the coin slot to the top of the bank. And there you have it, 117 year old post office box door that's been restored to its original mint condition. The door has also been repurposed into a beautiful black walnut uh, bank that can be used for many years to come. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope this video helps you out or gives you some ideas on how you can repurpose something that's very old. This is what we've been doing here at the Ingrain Workshop since probably 2006. This bank that I made today in this video, I will post on our Etsy store, and I'll leave a link to our Etsy store in the video description below uh, to not only that bank, but we have probably 20, 30 other banks on our Etsy store. And then we probably have 100 banks here inside the Ingrain Workshop. So if you're interested in that, check it out. I'm also going to leave a link in the video description below to any tools and equipment that we might have used in this project. And I'll also leave links to our uh, Airbnb cabins up in the Smoky Mountains in case you're looking for a Smoky Mountain vacation. Again, as always, Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, then please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you'll be notified of all our upcoming videos. To all our existing viewers and subscribers, we really appreciate the support. The support has really helped us out here at YouTube, and we really appreciate it. Again, this is Rick with the Ingrain Workshop. We'll see you next time, and have a wonderful day.